Hey everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and we are on day seven, which is sev halfway-ish on the 13 days of Halloween, where we meet up every day and do a different Halloween project. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me get these shows out to you by like coming in here and turning everything on and getting the camera and reading comments. So there we go. We've got technology happening. Um, oh my goodness, but I don't have my own iPad managed. <laughs> <laughs> and on a delay. There so we today we are doing, this is the first girl gnome that we've done on the channel, um, but she's candy corn. Uh, so she's also a Halloween painting and I think she's a lot of fun. I, she won't be the last girl gnome that we ever do, but she is the first one that we have done. I'm working on a nine by 12 surface. Uh, I'm using the same colors and same materials, same brushes all 13 days. Um, for Halloween because I know sometimes consistency really helps you guys kind of plan and work around on your materials and how you're going to do stuff. Um, we're putting out the initial colors to start with, which is for our background, which is titanium white. I've got purple and I've got phthalo blue. And also I have wishes and intentions and good vibes to go out into the world. So um, definitely first and foremost, we have a wish for Wendy and she's looking for healing and great healers for Little Brush Mavis and for her to have a very healthy heart. Um, we also have a wish for strength and encouragement and uplifting energy all around the bitcher's wife and her family. She's in here today, so give her some hearts and some love. Um, a wish for cure and relief around narcolepsy and strength to know how to handle that, you know, and finding community and space for that. Uh, healing for anyone who's in the hospital right now for any reason, if you're watching the show from the hospital, we're just wishing for you the best, happy, and healing. And then finally, and this was requested by Candy and the Gnomes, is that all gnomes will find themselves a forever home. Because gnomes are looking for forever homes, you know. And so she's wishing for that. That they can find a place in your yard to live there forever. Hmm. Mm. All right. Now... If you want to see all the materials, links to the traceable, because we don't expect you to draw or anything, um, those are in the description down below. Um, we don't necessarily use all colors every lesson, but that is the complete set as we go through the 13 days of Halloween. I'm very grab handy. A, hmm? It's very handy to have that. It is handy. I find that um, a helpful thing because sometimes just a little bit of planning ahead of time can create a little bit of heartache or difficulty on the back end. I'm going to take a big brush. This is not an expensive brush. These brushes tend to come in packs. Uh, you can find them at most craft stores and stuff. This is a synthetic white filament, and I like it because it'll dust out not only the wishes, but it'll help me get that kind of uh, background in. For this, I don't mm -hmm. want my surface to be too wet, so that's what you see me doing is making sure that as I put those wishes into the ether, they go there. So our first thing is going to be doing this kind of diagonal background. And what's awesome about this background is that it's super beginner friendly. If this is your first day painting, this is a fun first background, and you can use it in a lot of your own original paintings at home. So the trick to this is I'm going to get my brush just a titch wet, and I'm going to load with white first because it's really easy to tint white with blue. I've got uh, stunt hands doing some adjustments behind me. I don't know why. I'm going to get in there with blue. And then I'm also going to put in just a smidge of purple. And you can kind of see that I put it on both sides of the brush here. And then I'm just going to go back and forth. See, that's a lot of fun, isn't it? Just that nice streaky background. Every one you do is a little different. As you know, each time you load the brush, it'll be, it'll be not quite the same. Now the trick to this, what you'll want to watch for, especially if you're a beginner, is to not overwork your blending because it can eventually make it go away. And that can be a little bit less than fun. If you need to add more water to your brush, you can do that. I've got a paper towel here so I can check that I don't have too much. And I'm going to come back in and load with white. We sometimes add water to acrylic paint because that improves the flow. Oh, my goodness. I see Amy Ovard and Shazad and Becky and Grandma Smith. 
Um, and Becky is one of our uh, uh, viewers who is currently doing the hospital thing, and we're just wishing all the positivity that could be going on there. It's not fun to do the hospital. No. No. No, not fun. So especially right now, and so we're sending extra vibes. And if you're a first responder, somebody working in the medical field, thank you so much for your service and helping all the people right now. We actually have a friend uh, who's a doctor who actually went out on a very specific, he went to one of the COVID hospitals and worked 48 hour straight shifts to help people. And it's really just amazing what they did. I was in Texas. Well, with any luck, I'll be joining their rank soon. Yeah? I put my application in last night for the local volunteer fire department. Isn't that kind of cool? Local volunteer. So it, we may have to, like, miss a show just in case. But I'm sure you guys <laughs> will understand that. <laughs> well. Our community will get that. It, 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 we're just just on the beginning of that. So we're not going to. Right now, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna sweep the floors and see what I can do to help. Probably do some social media. Yeah, just. But then eventually, you never know. Well, you know, there's lots of jobs to do, not just like kicking doors down. There are lots of jobs to do and lots of ways to volunteer in your community that you might not think of. You know, ways to help your community out. And one thing that I've really come to since all of this COVID began is that it, there's the global scale and there's a national scale, but where we live and breathe is in our community. Mm -hmm. And that infrastructure and those connections and those relationships are the ones that we really need to keep our eyes on and stay connected to and figure out where we can help and be part of a positive change. You know, make things good. I know in Houston, uh, there is that sense of things, and I think that's why Houston deals with hurricanes and some of the struggles that they have as well as they do because people many hands make light work and people really reach out to help each other mm -hmm. there we go i feel like we've got a beautiful background i like today's blowiness hopefully you like yours remember to rinse your brush out and wash it after every art session mm -hmm. ah and Mary Youngblood says she has friends and family members who are volunteers in the local fire department. It is a great way, way to help. And Heather Campbell just said something very important. Poll workers are needed. And if you are in a low-risk group, I'm especially talking to some of our younger viewers, definitely think about, uh, I said this to my own daughter from when she was 18, volunteering as a local poll worker. That's a pretty cool thing that you can do. I know that uh, Meals on Wheels is also in need of a lot of volunteers. That's a good one. And I'd like to give a big, a big shout out to my friend out in San Francisco who's been running the Don't Go Hungry Food Bank at St. Sa 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 Aidan's Presbyterian Church um, in Westminster, New uh, BC. Um, so, so not San Francisco, but out in BC. I met him and he's my friend from San Francisco. But um, they've been doing a food bank out there. And to all the people out there who are doing those food banks right now, we really appreciate it. So if you've got a great organization in your area that is fighting for the greater good, that is putting positivity out there in the world and helping others, mm -hmm. and you want to give them a shout out in the chat, this would be a great time to do that. Talk about ways that in your community people can help each other. I know there's uh, definitely the animal shelters. Mm-hmm. Definitely needing some extra help. So let's brainstorm and make the world a better place while we relax and paint. I'm going to dry this canvas. All right. So if you are joining us for the first time and you're wondering, what can we do with this time here that we have? Well, while you're clicking that subscribe button down below and then click that bell so you can click the all button and get the notifications when we go live, I'm going to lay some heat information on you. Now that heat information is don't use heat when drying your surface. Make sure you use it on the coolest setting because heat affects paint. Because paint is a, uh, well, it's a modern polymer chemical and heat affects that. So all different kinds of way, doesn't matter what it is, um, just don't use heat. And use just your air moving across, but do make sure it thoroughly dries. So you're not wanting to pick up any paint as you're drying the next layer. So make sure you get that thoroughly, thoroughly dry and uh, not sticky with heat. 
not sticky with heat. And as, you know, the thing to remember on these boards is that they do always capture a little paint around the edges so you can get a little bit of a hand mess going. It's nice to have uh, baby wipes around is uh, something that a lot of people suggested. We had a great suggestion yesterday about putting a doggy pee pad down underneath the art mm. on the table because we did that splashy uh, artwork yesterday. And that turned out to be a really good suggestion. Mm. Now, I'm going to freehand our gnome and show you how I construct her. That being said, I recognize that when you're new to painting, maybe drawing isn't why you got into this and you don't feel comfortable about drawing yet. That's okay. We do have a free traceable that you can print out. You can download and print out on the website and transfer on there. And I do have a video on how to use that traceable. You can like just search the Art Sherpa traceable and it will pull up two really cool videos, one short one and one long one, all about that. Um, but that said, I'm going to show you guys how to do this. I'm going to use paint, which is kind of crazy, but what it does is it's going to help me make sure that you guys can see it. So I'm going to take a number 12 round and load up white because that'll be the easiest to sort of change my mind on. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a three finger from the bottom, which is I could use a measuring tool. A, a measuring <laughs> I have tool. them craziness that it is at least two and a half inches from the bottom. And that's just basically saying I need room for her boots and I may even raise it up you know, a little bit, because you want room for the boots. Room for the boots. Give, give the girl room for her boots. I might. So that at the end of her dress, you still have room to put her shoes. So I'm putting that at three inches. Uh, definitely. And then I'll even check this from the top, because I have this reference over here. Mm. I'm going to check it right now. Five inches from the top is where we're going to start the hat. And that'll give us a nice... Um, Plenty of gnome body room, but it gives us room for hat and feet. When you're new to painting, one of the things that can happen is you'll start at the top of a picture and work down and very quickly find yourself almost off the canvas. Like scale and size relationships can get away from you. So sometimes creating starting and stopping points can really help you not have that problem. Now I'm going to just come across and make a little, it looks like a frown. The bottom of the gnome hat looks a little bit like a frown, even though they're very happy hats. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Nice little frown. Amy Ovard says, these boots are made for walking. I That's would right. say these boots are made for arting. <laughs> she has a bit of a fun bend to her hat. So to do that, I'm going to create a little line to remind myself where that bend is going. And then it's pretty easy to bring the hat up. I taper it in because, you know, you want their little hats to get kind of pointy. Mm -hmm. This in, inner hat kind of comes in on a little bit of a fold. And then a little bit of fold there. Now, I think because the candy corn is so transparent, the yellows and everybody's paint sets, whether you're painting I was professional chat. or... Uh, a student, you are going to want to paint in the basis of your gnome white first, just to help her be bright. Mm. You were reading chat, sir? I was reading chat, and I noticed that you, you went up a little higher than I was the camera. Oh, pointing. excuse us. You were, you're we're just having kind white. of a day here. You're painting white backgrounds. I am. Well, here's the thing. Yellow it can be such a transparent color. If we put in a little bit of white first, even if you got this... And you may have your streaky background significantly darker than mine. You could have it lighter, but you might have it darker. So this extra little step will help you guys that are maybe having a little trouble with your coverage. Mm. Now, her face, I'm going to just make a little round oval underneath. Pretty fun and easy. And what's great is she's got so much gorgeous curly hair that we won't have to uh, be too worried. Now, you're not bound to just this hairstyle. Mm -mm. You have a whole series of videos on different hairstyles. I truly do. Like, I have it, a whole series of videos on different hairstyles. Just every bit of them. And you can see how I moved that line there. I wanted the line to be a little bit smaller, as you do. I'm going to come here. Now, what's wonderful, she's got a little A-frame swing dress. I have so many hairstyle videos. You could do a guy tang hairstyle here if you wanted. Hmm. 
I don't know, but I like the old school guy tang where it was more colorful. He's gotten very uh, tasteful lately. <laughs> very classy. <laughs> Too tasteful for me. Definitely will want this um, yellow dress. We don't have to worry about the black. We're just trying to make sure where we're going to be putting our candy corn pattern. It has a nice white base. And I'm still just using a number 12 round. This came in the kit if you guys got the kit. And I know we didn't have, a, a, next year we'll make sure we have more kits because our demand certainly exceeded our supply. But we are working on it. If you want to get these materials, I'm doing the Artist Loft uh, Level 3 and the Abstract Sennelier. So you can find these online. You can find the Artist Loft on Michael's and you can find the Sennelier at most art stores. Another good place to help out is to, to make sure that you shop local art stores because while the big box chains um, are definitely surviving, a lot of the art stores didn't get any help, didn't get any aid, and are really struggling. Mm -hmm. so any, any love that you can give them is always appreciated. I'm going to also add a little white to the little base area. Now, how I can kind of keep track of that is you can see even my brush stroke helps me hold where her face is. So not too bad, not too hard. Might want to exaggerate even her candy corn dress a little more. Now that we've done her a couple times, I like mm -hmm. to exaggerate things. All right. I'm going to let that have a sit for a minute. And, oh, the coloring book should be here today, says the butcher's wife. So thank you so much for all the coloring book orders. Um, I want to say that we are shipping them internationally. But if you want an international uh, coloring book, it's like our friends over in Australia. We love you. But $6.50 does not cover shipping to you. <laughs> so um, it's all, and also sometimes we need extra information like uh, contact information. Um, it really changes as we get out of the country. So we need you guys to write us at support at theartsherpa.com so that we can arrange for your shipping and any extra information that we need. And we need to have real good contact info for you. But we do not mind doing the extra work in shipping uh, these globally. Um, if you're not aware, I released a coloring book that was a collaboration between myself and my friend Stephanie Bergeron. She adapted uh, the art of the show into a coloring book. And it's just gorgeous. And we love it. And it's based on all your favorite paintings. Mm. It's just epic. Epic sauce, I think. Shameless plug. Oh, huh. so with my little hat. Mm. Oh, nothing. Do we have a question? Oh, someone had asked what the difference between uh, Karen, what the difference with whether it's Smurfs and gnomes were distant relatives. And mm -mm. I actually just did a mortal quick search. enemies. Are they mortal enemies? I have decided yet, but what does oh. the internet say? <laughs> oh, well, the inter I, don't know. <laughs> I have decided, but I mean. Well, so the history is his, the Smurfs are... Why are we even saying anymore what does the internet say? But okay, let's go for it. What does the internet say? <laughs> well, Smurfs are a, a, a Belgian-French origin, mm -hmm. right? And so they're based on a comic book of little blue people, which... Have, Seems very Belgian-French. Right, yeah, I got yeah. it. Yeah, and I'm with you. <laughs> gnomes are a much more broadly Western concept of a diminutive fairy creature. And it's it has a lot of usage from video games in World of Warcraft to... J.R. Tolkien, uh, who used it as well. So yeah. it's it's a broad use for a small diminutive fairy creature. So one could say Smurfs might be gnomes of a variety. but Or gnomish. Or gnomish. I don't know. I feel like gnomes and Smurfs are mortal enemies. It's my that, feeling. They could be. I don't you know. know. They could be. Because gnomes are magical and territorial. And little known fact, gnomes eat trolls. And as I hear They're it. They're troll control. Like like ladybugs are aphid control. Gnomes are troll control. <laughs> So Gargamel <laughs> says, you know, that uh, Smurfs are particularly tasty. So that's his bag. Gargamel's a weird villain. Really Let's is. just own it. Let's just own it as my paint dries. Okay, Let's just. just own Gargamel is a completely bizarre, strange, crazy villain. Yeah, so is Papa Smurf and Smurfette, but we won't go into those two either. Oh, so weird. So if you're Smurfing along at home... Don't smurf your painting with too much smurf because smurf is bad for your painting. So if you've had enough smurf like I have, don't use heat.
When you see me lifting up, I'm just protecting this paint from that hot air. Yeah. <laughs> bump. Sorry. I don't know why that's so amusing to me. Karen suggests that it might be the Hatfields and the McCoys between the Smurfs. And I think the... so. I think it's super serious. Yeah. I think so because gnomes are just, you know, uh, what else is weird? This conversation. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's all the people who decided to show up today in the middle of the week to paint a gnome. Yeah, it is a weird conversation, and we acknowledge that. Well, we acknowledge I mean, your experience, but we're not sorry. Listen, <laughs> I'm mean, just going to say, if you're here... For the candy corn gnome, this conversation is, you, shouldn't be freaking you out. If you're here for a candy corn gnome, you uh, you are like, you're a viewer. You're here. <laughs> you're, you're here. This is us. <laughs> so this is a really weird stage to go from here to here. I totally get that. And like this background was a little bit darker. And that's one of the things that I mean is like sometimes when you do this streaky background, it's oh. different between you know, the different characters. So that's why that white step, while while crazy messy looking, it might seem weird to you if you just dropped into the live show, is one of those things that you really need to do if you want your color to be bright and wonderful. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my red and yellow a bit together, just a smidge, not much, wipe off on the paper towel, and I'm just going to make a very light little skin tone. Very light, little skin tone. So I'm just taking the red from my set, which is, this is the primary red. You could use like naphthol red. You could use cad red medium. This is the nickel, uh, this is the, yeah, it's the nickel ozo yellow, but you can use Hansa yellow or um, yellow medium ozo. This is the yellow medium ozo. You can use Hansa yellow. You can use cad yellow. It's totally fine. But what you do want to make is a very fair skin tone. You don't have to make her fair, though. Very fair. You do not need to. You do not? You do not. You have other skin tone videos that we can use? I do use. have other skin tone videos, and you can give her darker skin tones. You could give her blue skin tones if you're angry right now and are a Smurf fan and just want to rebel. What if you are <laughs> having a Smurf talk? So what if you were wanting to go a little hulkish? Do you have some green skin tones? You could do green skin tones. Heck, we did it for Groot, right? So yeah, That's true. Listen, we got them all. Your paintings should reflect you, and there's literally nothing wrong wanting that. Mm. Right? So, if you want to change one of my paintings to reflect yourself and your family, I support that. A thousand percent. All right. So, there's that little skin tone face. And it's, mm. you can see, it's just pretty simple, pretty chill. And now we're going to start. Uh, Candy corning it up. So let's start with some yellow here. And you can see right away what I mean about the yellow being transparent. And why even on this, and these are pro level paints, even on this, you want to have a little bit of white underneath to make sure that those colors are bright. Because if I didn't do this, what I would get is a glaze and the blue and purple underneath would gray and green out the yellow. Mm. I'm going to keep brushing this up. Isn't that nice? But now it's nice and bright, isn't it? Now we've exaggerated the little bell on her skirt more. I love it. <laughs> Smurfs can never be evil, says Irene. She's like, I love the Smurfs. I hear you. I hear you. And we support your Smurf love. We don't want to, you know. No. I want to not support your Smurf love. I have to say for... For me, it was the uh, Gargamel really just freaked me out as a kid, I think. Yeah, we're not going to Gargamel on your Smurfs. We are not. No. No. I would definitely... De oh, I mean, what is wrong with that dude? No, I might I think all... I ask myself that all the time as a kid. Like, what is wrong with this dude? They're talking and they have a city. You don't eat that. That's not okay. Now, if you're going to start some stuff, I'm going to call my boys Asterisk, a Asterisk and Obelix. And we'll just, you know... Get it done. Are you? <laughs> I'm not exactly, exactly sure if they're gnomes or trolls or what, but man, those two are rough and tumble French guys. Yeah. With some magical powers. I'm going to come here and just the orange. And as we go up, it'll get darker and darker, right? Because that's what candy corn uh, do. I have my example candy corns on my head for y'all. I hope you like my headgear. Oh, that's right. They're galls. I forgot about that. I, I, uh, 
Dinia Rashid said, is it Halloween? In the United States, it is. But it's not universally Halloween everywhere. Um, it, it, I, like in Canada, you know, mm-hmm. they, don't, they don't celebrate every holiday at the same time as us. I think this one specifically, they do. Did they? It was just Thanksgiving that was different. Thanksgiving was different. You know, they uh, got on the Indigenous People Day a little bit before we did. You know. They did. <laughs> They're, Much respect to the Canadians. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting because talking to the folks up in Canada, they, um, you know, whereas America talks about it's a melting pot where we take all the culture and we bring it together and we mash it up and we turn it into, you know, fire gnomes or, you know, monster trucks. Monster trucks, right? That's a good example. So, <laughs> but in in Canada, they like to think themselves as a, a tapestry of many different um, fabrics. Which you I know, thought was really beautiful. Yeah. So it's, it's a collage of many different tapestries. And so, because they all come together to form communities together and make a big group. So, but they're, they tend to be. Have, As we speak for the Canadians, totally no, not no. being Canadian. But no, this in all the, fairness, I did have my daughter there in the Royal Canadian Hospital. So she's And they Canadian. told us this. This is like. It, yeah. This we're is, just quoting. We're just, guys, we're just repeating it. But it was interesting because it's a, there's a, a much a stronger sense of local culture without it being divisive yeah it's nice so that was really interesting you could go to districts where there were rich cultures in the city without it being um having a prejudice or i should say less of it than i felt was here in america so <laughs> i just it. went right off the freeway didn't it no, john just no. took the off ramp <laughs> No, I mean, just like, you know, everywhere you go, you always run into weird people. But like, you know, by and large, I really, I, did, I enjoyed my time in Canada. And it was just like, I, I don't want to speak for all people there, but I think that, you know, it's awesome. And we couldn't. No. Because it's, again, a very diverse community for sure. I, we have a diverse community here in the United States. Yeah. I, it's nice. Actually, I, I like it. Cultural mosaic instead of a melting I, pot. I like, I like that very much because I feel like we all make each other more. So as I'm coming up, you can see I'm deepening the orange. Right? Orange. Deepening that up. And then when I want to transition into the white, I'm going to actually go ahead and get my white into it to create a transitional bridge to get to the white part of the hat. See as I'm doing here. And that will help enforce that candy corn feeling. And I'm Blending kind of visually by making these like multi-directional brush strokes. Uh, Sherilyn concurs uh, uh, that Canada is a cultural mosaic instead of a melting pot. Yeah, mm-hmm. so ca- the Canadians say, yes, you did not misspeak. <laughs> We're very blessed. We've gotten to travel a bit, John especially so. And what I've learned is that everybody has something beautiful. Canadians are totally tolerant culturally until you talk about hockey. Then well, it's and then all. y'all lose your mind, seriously. Like, it's just, <laughs> just on, what? like, You hockey. just think you're, like, in a Canadian bubble, and then you say, like, some hockey thing. That, oh, my goodness. And also, you guys need to explain the beard thing to, like, tourists ahead of time because, like, you come at a weird time of year, and surprise. all the men have, like, the full beards. It's confusing. It was confusing. And then it, the, the excuse hockey season just as a blanket it was not like and this is an excuse wasn't for everything. an explanation like, i'm just saying it's like you came outside with two different shoes on it's hockey season it's like, what is that how does that make it okay <laughs> what's okay it was just i mean it was okay because everybody like, had facial hair and then all of a sudden whole groups of people would like lose their facial hair and you're like is it like a net it took us like a minute to figure it out because you don't want to ask, right? You don't want to be like intrusive and ask. I'm just continuing up the hat with white. We're just kind of painting in a relaxed way with her today. That is today's vibe is a relaxed, <laughs> chill paint along. And apparently wax about Canada. Who knows why? She's calling the spirit and forcing this to happen. I didn't make this happen. She made this happen. Oh, Bodie, thank you so, so much. And thank you for the lemon. I really appreciate that. I do, I do, I do just deeply. Mm. Oh, this makes some sense from Irene. She was talking about a write-up about uh, playing gnomes versus uh, Smurfs in role-playing games. And, no. You know, 
you know, Smurfs belong to the human cr class of characters, whereas gnomes are magical creatures. I, I agree with that. I don't know. If you I need remember. you to microwave my coffee. Uh, uh, Kimberly Samalka says, I asked my son last night if candy corn was in Australia, and he said maybe Costco Australia, because Australia doesn't make a big deal of Halloween. Here's why. Because y'all have scarier nature than anybody could have come up with Halloween. I think that, yeah, you guys have some, like, nature. Even the budgies are in, like, the beautiful budgie flocks of the flying, but there's so many of them. It gets, like, very the birds really quick. Like, I watch a lot of nature shows. I haven't actually been to Australia. But I do watch a lot of nature shows. I do. I like nature shows. Not the nature shows where they, like, really get, like, let's explain to you the cycle of life nature show. That does not give me a peaceful moment. You know, but like the nature shows that just kind of explain to me ecosystems without like crushing my mind, I guess is what it is. I'm kind of, kind of maybe need to be braver is what it is. Deliberately Creative says, hey, John, Mark says Sherpa soap cleanses sweat and grime out of quality baseball caps. His work hat was getting gross. <laughs> <sighs> and Mary Youngblood says, I have a brand new tube of cat orange. I think I might use some of it on her head instead of mixing the orange. If you do, Mary, you will find that her hat is so gorgeously orange. Cadmium is always one of those colors where it's like, thank goodness they coat the artist pigment a little mm. bit extra so it's bio, not bioavailable. If you're not familiar, uh, cadmium colors, real cadmium pigment, not cadmium hue, not cadmium free, the real cadmium pigment does have cadmium in it. It's a little different than the battery cadmium uh, for yourself and the environment in that it's coated, but you still shouldn't eat it. And you do want to check for allergies um, with any of the professional pigments because some of those pigments are so, are real. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a video of <gasps> the world's deadliest pigments. <laughs> murderous, most murderous pigments. I don't know. We haven't really tuned it in, but you guys will get a laugh out of it. Yeah, it should be fun. Okay. So she's doing pretty good. She's got her little head here and she's got... You know, she's ready for um, she's ready for her hair. Now, I'm going to go ahead and really load my brush with some black. Uh, I'm not even in my cat's tongue yet, though I think to do the curls, it depends on how the curls go with this brush. So how I do her hair is I'm going to come just a little bit down from her hat, right? Not, not all the way up to the top. Okay, and then we're going to come down here. So she's got her little uh, braids and curls going off to the side. Mm -hmm. And then I'm definitely going to kind of bow that out because there's a lot of hair gathered here is what I'm trying to say. When I was a girl growing up, I wanted curly hair so bad and my hair would not hold a curl. Like my mom would curl it in like two seconds, like it would just fall out. And then we went and got perm but here's the genius move we did we just got my bangs permed it's not a good look mm. it's not a good look it was not a smart move on our part <laughs> you know that's funny how everybody wants the different hair than what they have yeah you know if you have curly hair you want straight if you have straight you want curly if you have wavy you want it straight if you're if, if your hair has no body you want it to be fully wavy and like it's just the way it is and then you go like this and then here's what this is this is super fun right we're going to come over this with some red but we're going to come here and we're going to start to do curls right so let's come out here and just on the toe of your brush you're going to just start to paint in some curls right lots of curls though on the toe of your brush, just dancing along the toe of your brush. And we fill this in as we go. Don't be too perfect about your curls. It's about quantity. She's got a lot of wonderful curly hair. Uh, right now she has a mustache. <laughs> this is Diane. <laughs> Years ago I got a perm and I didn't keep my forehead under the heat because my bangs uh, and caused my bangs to miss out. Whoa. Ooh, another thing. Another huh. thing. You know, Bob Ross's hair was permed. He did it once to save money on haircuts and then got stuck doing that forever. That is not why I keep my hair purple, if you've ever wondered. Uh, I keep it purple because I like it. 
<laughs> it is definitely a choice, not a circumstance. Come here and bring some little curls down. Can you guys see, like, as John's showing you from the corner uh, angle, how how these little curls are going? That's how we get this wonderful, fabulous hair. Counter curl, I think. Super fun for me. Get some more counter curls going here. And that's how we get that really fun little curl going. Now she's got some nice curly hair. I love it. Hmm. Let's do the same on the other side. <gasps> You're going to have a symmetrical hairdo? Well, I mean, semi-symmetrical. Ask Luna. It's never as symmetrical <laughs> as it needs to be. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what? Like, huh. when I was a girl and my mom, you know, only could do, like, a couple of hairstyles, I was never that upset about it. But my kids have the internet, and so they've got dad who learns how to do his daughter's hair, and they're doing 7,500 kinds of braids. And my kids are like, it's like you're not even trying. You know, we didn't have the internet to contend with. Is My mom didn't have that as a parent. It was like, Mom, you don't know how to do this crazy hairstyle that's totally online and super. My daughter's laces on her shoes. Jeez, just she does all these beautiful patterns of laces and she just went and found out how to do it online and then all the kids did it and then they each have their own signature little lacing for their shoes i was just so thrilled to tie my shoes i just feel like an underachiever sometimes with generation z and alpha they are really spectacular as a generation i am pretty excited to see what they do you know uh, done some amazing things haven't they Am I getting a little crazy with the curls on both sides, or is it looking great? Will you do a watercolor week, says Mahul. I might do a watercolor week. I might have one come up. Um, that might occur. I don't know when, though. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure that we keep up the Wednesday. And remember, guys, if you're doing the watercolors with me on Wednesday, um, be really careful. Um, I don't sell tickets to watercolor Wednesday. Um, it's a free stream, and you just watch it from Facebook. So uh, you should not uh, be buying tickets from anybody online. Sometimes they try to sell them. They try to sell them in private message, and then they try to sell them on different web pages, and I can't get it to stop. We've tried. We've talked to, talked to Facebook, talked to everybody, can't get it to stop. There's no uh, solution right now, so my solution is be safe. Mm. Be safe. Safe, safe. Uh, Amy over it says there are people who can do 11 strand braids who has the time I don't know that guy who does his daughter's hair that's who has the time you know and my kids keep sharing the link with me that guy yeah has some time and he was like you know what I'd like to do I'd like to win win at braids that's what he did <laughs> mm. I'm gonna put in a little line for nose here just a little round nose so many good questions and then I'm going to kind of draw a, uh, some lips in in a minute, but I think I'll do them in red and then go over them with uh, my black lining. So let's come down in feet while we're letting all that have a dry. All right. Let's give her some fun boots. I like her little boots. So this is a weird thing. Come down. And then a little curl up. You have a question for me, babe? Uh... Oh man, so many questions. Okay, so can you explain to how to fix a brush that is splayed and lost lost its shape? You mentioned something of some magic hot oh, water. Oh yeah, if you um, and I have a video for this. Uh, hopefully, my mods can find it and drop it in. Um, the first thing that you want to try is you uh, get some hot hot water, not hot enough to cause scald your fingers, but as hot as you can take it, and you wash all the paint you can get out of the brush. Right, very, very thoroughly. Then you dip the brush in hot water for about 20, 30 seconds. Then you pull it out and you finger shape it back into shape and lay it flat to dry. That's that basic first repair. Mm. Now there's stuff like, you know, if you have paint dried in there and all that, there's a lot of things that you can do. But what you can save almost any brush, even from varnish. 
You know what helps save the brush? Mm. Sherpa soap. It is true. I'm Sherpa gonna soap. plug our stuff. If you that's okay, but we don't have any in the store right now. It's to stop plugging it. We have other stuff in the store. It's true. We have other stuff in the store, but we don't have Sherpa soap. Oh, in the I store can't right get now. over there to finish pouring some. So I, well, I'm sorry. I get my little heel out here and a little <laughs> thing down. We make videos. I don't know what to say. And that's no, how I built her fun little Nomi shoes. We have soap when it's available. That's because it's soap. Soap comes after video time. Soap comes after video time. Christine and Richardson, thank you so much. Thank you, Christine. And Amy's loving my headband. She says, uh, uh, Suita de Holly says, can you please say hi to me in chat? I am sure the community will say hi to you in chat. They are very, very friendly. Mm -hmm. We have a very, very friendly art community. I'm going to make another boot. This is, so here's the trick. I'll show you a little trick because one of the things that gets everybody is like my boots are in different places. You've just got to make sure that you've got this part at the same height. So one of my tricks is to use my T square just to make sure they're level. Right? So that when I come down and I'm kind of doing that. Karen asks. They at least are on the same level, so her grounding feels real. Mm. Curve that back around and then paint in that shoe. These shoes are just a hoot and a half, aren't they? Those are super cute. They're just super cute boots. She got super cute boots, and now you know how to keep it all level. You can also, like, just do finger measurements or all kinds of things. What is, what's the question? So Karen was asking, um, let me go here. How do we set up monthly donations? And so I'm dropping links right now to our patronage. So our patronage is a little bit like other patronages and also a little bit different. It's not on Patreon. Nope. Um, we have several tiers uh, at, at the top tier. Um, they just, they, they get private lessons. They got a Zoom meetup. Um, and then as it goes down, we have just different rewards, watercolor lessons, acrylic lessons, extra weird stuff. Sometimes we do figure painting. Like uh, if you're in the group, every, there's group lives. It, there's a lot of stuff for it. And it's ongoing and every month, uh, like unrelenting right now. Yeah. the uh, we try you, to, are, you are hooked up. You are hooked up. I am well, going you, to black line the hat while I'm sitting here. On the toe of my brush, I'm just going to outline with this black line and come along and black line her little hat. <gasps> Kristen Iceland, thank you so much. Oh, and also patrons get early notifications of new products and they get to do mm -hmm. some beta testing. We sell, and if we sell artwork, generally they hear about it first. All our prototype materials go into the patron store first. <laughs> That's right. We make them try our stuff. That's to, right. All of to our, make sure it doesn't suck. All of our experimental stuff that we think <laughs> we're not sure of, we, get, we let the patrons Doesn't that go. sound special? It's like, <laughs> you, you get, want to be part of that? You get to figure out if we did it right. <laughs> Woo, lucky you. But seriously, guys, we like we. Um, if you're in the patronage, we try to give you guys access to things for helping us build the show. And if you click on the link there, or if you go to theartsherpa.com and click on Patron right there in the menu, you can see that there are some tiers there that you can join up on the website. And as we continue to expand that website, you'll see all of those things in your in your dashboard once you log in. So. All right. So Amy says, would it look weird to outline, outline the gnome in a brown color? No, I don't think it would at all. I think it would be very nice. Yeah. Um, light lining is a whole trend right now, so that's a cool thing to do. Light lining is using colors that are a lighter color than the traditional black lining. Um, and uh, Dee Dee says the gnome has cool boots, and she isn't a Shriner. Mm. But I, okay. <laughs> um is what we're gonna do. We're gonna give her lips. I'm going to get into oh. my detail brush. This is an Art Sherpa, and this is not an Art Sherpa detail. This is just a Silver Studio number one detail or zero detail. They're just tiny brushes so you can control where the paint goes a little bit easier. And how I load it is I dip it not up above the ferrule, just in the filaments into water, come out from the side, and then thin the paint enough to paint. If you weren't sure how that was done, that's how that's done. And we're going to make a little V. 
and then align off the little V that curves a bit up. All right. And we're going to come down. There you go. That's the basis for the mouth. Come across. There's the top lip. I like to have the top lip be a little bit darker in general than the bottom lip. Mm. So sometimes I'll come and get a little um, white into that for the bottom lip. So that there's two tones. A little bit. Oh. Yeah, put it, you could add a boot, a uh, spider to the boot too. You That'd could be... add a spider to the boot, or you could add a spider to the hat. Oh. Her hat could have a little spider. Do you guys want me to add a spider? A spider hat? Do you want to you want a detail bonus in this live lesson for those of you who bothered to show up to the live? Would you I, like a detail bonus because you're special I would good like people? One. You would like one? I like it. All right. I will speak for them. I would like a spider on the hat. All right. We'll spider the hat. She can Because be, that would be super cute. She's part of the spider hat crew. She's part of the spider hat crew. You can, you know them by their hat. It's true. And then come right here and add a little red to the nose. Get a little red nose. She's cute. Mm. She's super cute. And while this is drying, because I want to put up a second coat, we will start with the, with the spider feature. So here, I'm going to show you a little trick. Okay. John will zoom in. I'm going to make kind of a, a another video about this. So if you want more information about it, you're going to get it. But let's talk webs. Okay. So if she were to have a spider web, that her little spider was, say, hanging from, we're going to put a little dot here. And then we're going to add a line, a line. Definitely to the tip of the hat. A line. Right. We've got this little lining group that's happening here. And we're going to go. We're going to make little support strands coming out. It's nice to have some of them in different places because you know it's about catching the flies so there's a good question out here what's the difference between tint and tone Tinting. Or, sorry value and tone so they're very similar value is how light or dark something is and tone deals with the color that it is mm -hmm. so if you're, but, but it still refers to light and dark too. It does. Sometimes. So it's a complicated thing, but your value is strictly speaking on the lightness and darkness of a, of a color or hue, so to speak. Whereas mm -hmm. your tint, tone, and shade are more to do with the color. Does that make sense? There we go. So she's got a little web coming off of her hat. Why not, right? Mm-hmm. Ooh, she could be wearing spider jewelry like Cinnamon sometimes wears. <laughs> See, you you made a little hanging spider. I was of thinking, course. I was thinking it was going to be like you know, like a spider symbol on her hat. Oh, you know? that's also good. <laughs> I could do that as well. <laughs> or like, uh, you know, be more specific with artists. There's no telling oh, where we're yeah, going to go. No, it's... So when I make the little ball, I'm going to come out with just this brush in and go fluff this. You should be fluffy. I have to tell you as a person who's afraid of spiders, it's very essential that I make them as cute <laughs> as I possibly can. You do want them to be as adorable as they can be. Mm, yep. And then I'm going to come in here. Remember, they got the eight legs. I like to make sure that we give him eight legs. It's a very cutie cute spider. He needs to be a cute cute spider. Spiders need to be cute. Otherwise, no. No, none of it, right? See? Yeah. <laughs> now, while he's there, let's give him some cutie cute eyes. So we're going to take our white and just make sure he's got some cutie cute eyes. I like to make one eye bigger than the other. Give him some oogly. Yeah, he needs some oogly. 
I like that she had a little web in her hat. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally okay. Then I'm going to come down and definitely give her another layer of red on her lip. Isn't that nice? That's really all she needed. Mm. I'm come in and make a super light pink. We're Mehul. almost done, guys. Mehul asks, what is perspective? Perspective <laughs> is how you use line, color, and object relationship to create the illusion of depth in a canvas. So there's something called linear perspective. And that's how you create vanishing points and lines, converging or diverging lines, to give the illusion of depth. Atmospheric perspective is how you use things like value and texture, color and hue to create a sense of depth. But it's really all about creating shape and form and the illusion of that on a surface because obviously we're, we're super stuck with this one, you know, one dimensional surface. So to make it feel two dimensional, that's the game. You didn't make know. a much, much lighter uh, color here. What, what you nose. doing there? I'm putting a little light pink highlight on her nose. You didn't know that today was Sherpa Pop quiz day did you i did not but you know what i'm here to answer art questions Why right you... like my so... daughter and i were at the doctor the other day and she was she was asking me about like running into fans and i was like you know i you know we do sometimes run into people to watch the show but that's not why i started the show i started the show to teach people how to paint mm. so these these the highlights you're and doing get some black also add some some depth to it, don't they? They give it some shape and, and kind of that sense of, of, of things having, having shape. Like that lip feels just a little rounder for the highlight. Mmm. Mahul says, have you seen Christmas Chronicles on Netflix? This kind of looks like an elf from that movie. I, I have not, but I will now. You, I will you, now. Yeah, you're the Netflix. And then jumper. Diane's like, you've got scrunchies on your ponytails. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are very 80s. Mary today. is off. Oh, my goodness. Or so. Yeah, I did. I bought a bunch of scrunchies. I don't know what happened. Scrunchies overtook me. But I felt like today with this little headband, oh. I needed that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the smile lines there. A this, nice touch. This gnome reminds me of the girl that we used to watch. She was on the show with the two waitresses, but she had the black hair. Two broke girls? Two broke girls. <laughs> That's marriage right there. I'm going to take some red and give her some scrunchies. I might add some white and yellow to it to make them show up just a little bit. There we go. A little bit there. So she's got some little hair bands that show what she's got going on. I don't know. I think she's pretty good. I think she's looking pretty good. Uh, Paula's like, keep telling her to do stuff so it won't end. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to drag this out for another six, four minutes because uh, we're going to take it to the hour. You want to take it to the hour? You've got, it's, we're at 53, so you can give them a good solid five minutes and we can slide in under an hour. You could highlight her hair. That's or true. Her boots. Or we her... could do a highlight on the hair. I'm going to take some white and blue, just enough to help the blue show. I've got my uh, detail brush in, and I'm going to add some blue little highlights to her hair. Paula says pumpkin buttons or skull buttons. <gasps> I'm going to do both. I'm gonna do both. Oh my goodness! Can I do skull buttons? That would be really fun. Okay, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. I like the blue hair highlights. You were doing. All good right. With that. Now, well, now we're past seven minutes though. If right. I do pumpkin well, you know, buttons and skull and is, hair highlights and things. Is what but it is. is nice to do. It is nice to do it. The, the people have spoken. They said. Sometimes Smurf it's just the times, Sherpa. Just do it. Just do it. Just a little bit of extra, all right? I'm gonna go over here. There and we go. That. Just giving her, giving that. her hair just a little bit of extra, right? You know that just a little bit of extra totally takes it over the top too. It's, it does. It's just that little bit of extra, and I always love when we get to take a little extra time 
because you know you you put a little highlight on those boots and a little buttons on her and man she just starts to zing i think yeah we could definitely definitely i think skull buttons would be hysterical oh yeah skull buttons you know you could amy was like you could put a broomstick in the background you could do all sorts of stuff yeah i think we you could we could you spend we could days. honestly i could be here for three hours with this gnome i'm not even kidding no, like, could, I could turn this into a three-hour tour. Like, this was Gilligan's Island, man. It would be a no meringue in no time. <laughs> no meringue. <sighs> uh, yeah, I could build a little gnome city behind her, like little gnome houses. <laughs> her environment could get complicated quick. It could. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's like we just paint and paint this and was, paint and paint was, and paint. It's supposed to be just like a little quick one hoot painting for y'all to have it, have it a moose bouche of gnome. An amuse bouche. So I'm gonna take. Uh, we want to do the buttons here, right? right so I'm gonna do. take. I'm gonna at first make a little circle. Why do you paint them white first? Well, because it's a skull. Oh, okay. That makes sense. More sense. Yeah. Sometimes you paint stuff white before you paint it. Because if I know the color is transparent, let's make sure my water would be too dirty for what's coming next. Can you, if you can Hold see on. how dirty that is, you wouldn't want water that dirty. So it's a good time to change it out. If you have not, you want it about here. Dirty water. Go because it'll keep, it'll keep your colors from getting too dull. I think she needs at least three buttons, right? At least three. And a candy corn in the lens's way. Then I will aim back. <laughs> it'd you be like, it's, it'd it's, be it's, like, you know what? Things have gone, because you could, you could have little crazy little houses. You could have all the world. You've been kidnapped into the all day gnome paint a thon. It's a gnome a thon. When you have her in that far, I'm gonna load back up. And then underneath, we're going to do two front teeth and then one on either side. So you have at least four. Got the. Oh, yep. I want Christmas is my two front teeth. All right, so there we go. And a little bit on either side. Understand I'm just doing this from my weird imagination. Which gets very strange, I have to tell you. Uh, depending on how John is, we could like get crazy where people are like, wait, I didn't know that that gnome was being painted today. Mm. And you could be like, oh, yeah, well, you should have been there, yo. This is why we do things. So there's the basis for that, and you'll want to like definitely let that get um, get kind of dry and everything. That is super cute. I don't know what I want to do with her boot then. <laughs> Twix is over there saying, "I have." Pl Where are you going with the boots? I'm going to give it going. a candy corn, I think. Oh, button. I almost missed that. I was like, where'd you go? That's, that's a good idea. This little, Christ, Christine Ann says, this little gnome has won my heart. Yay! I mean, we could turn her into super painting in about two seconds. I know you could. I right. know you can, but what can I? Encourage me, guys. I know Encourage you can, me. But do you want me I? to go longer? What do, you, do you want me I just to go look, like. Ba -do 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 there's just more people just showing up. Just, All right, let's do it. They just keep going. Okay. I'm, I'm going to let you do John this. started this, though, so if you're, like, here for a minute, you're like, how did this happen? I want you to know that you you encouraged it. Blame it on the gnome, baby. I will still use only what's in the kits. Don't worry. Only what's in the kit. Now, to get the back of the candy corn, I'm going to do a little white and uh, yellow just to help with the coverage. And we'll do that little stripe there so that she's got the little candy corn things. Now, so say you're doing a painting and you're like, this is just a ton of fun, but I just want it to be more 
or uh, or to feel like uh, more interesting and 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 spatial because the character was like, oh, this is really cool, but what else could I do? And John isn't here to you know stop that, so. <laughs> I'm going to come in with a little of my blue and white and where we're kind of focused. Let's finish out her hair. And make her curls even more spectacular. So we let the white dry so we can come back and black line it in. And you can see that that does create that little sense of highlight and dimensionality in her hair, which is very fun. Extra detail, extra, 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 extra. There we go. The blue and the orange will play off each other really nicely. Um, uh, Alejandra says, hey, Sherpa. And then Paul and is, John is singing the icing on the cake. Life is worth living again. Well, I'm glad we could contribute to your happy. I'm hoping that these paintings are contributing to everybody's happy. Um, I know for me, having a chance to paint and relax definitely helps my happy every day. I definitely hope they help your happy every day. I hear little dogs having a run, having a thought. Adding a little bit there. So, see, that just is a nice little extra touch. Where were you at, babe? Okay. Yep. I'm going to get my little brush here. I'm going to add some black to it. And we're going to come outline the top of the skull, but not the teeth yet. Because the teeth, you're going to want to really sort of work out. Because you want them to feel like teeth, right? You have to kind of get in there with that. I'm adding a drop of water and thinning it out so it thins nicely. And there we go. And let's give them some. Very Gotta really eyes. thin that so it gives you nice flow. That's what you're seeing me do is get like. Making sure we've got nice flow. And remember, the skull nose is an upside down heart. Mm -hmm. So that's the easy way to get that done is to just do an upside down heart. who really wanted a scorpion and so someone else was like how come you want a scorpion and he was like because they're scary <laughs> that's a good Dude, reason it's really hard. that's a good reason not for nothing because as per mentioned i'm gonna just add a little black to some of my um hair now when i'm painting on my own when i'm doing something on my own it's really not about anything past uh, making my art brain happy. So I go, I don't go, well, I'm going to paint for this long and then stop. I'm always like, until I'm done. Which could be any amount of time. Could be. You know, um, it's not that I'm not a fast painter. You guys know that I am. <laughs> Sometimes you get talky. Sometimes I do get talky. Even then I know I'm painting pretty fast. 
Yeah, that's true. So you were adding those little blacks back in, and so it's it those layers make a difference. You know, coming back even with the black layer on top of the blue, it just keeps making a difference to how that's so cute. All the hair and I, the, every, there's lots of people commenting on how much they like her lips. Oh, I'm so glad you guys like her lips. You could do a jack o' lantern hair clip, or a, or just one sitting next to her. Just all sorts of things. All right. You could do any of those things. All the thing, everything that's about to happen, you asked for it. What are you doing? <laughs> Why don't you go full screen and I will show you. There you go, full screen. All right. So she's pretty cute. She's, she's very cute. She's pretty wonderful. I'm going to come here and I'm going to make a line There's across mm, and a line you. down. What is that you're doing over there? I'm going to make an upward vertical and then I'm going to come out here and then definitely make another little vertical. More gnome girls, they say. More gnomes. We have not had enough gnomeliness. You're putting a you're putting a norm gnome village in there. I am Zoop. embracing that the gnome town. She could have an environment. So sometimes when you're painting, you'll be like, "Man, I could have done a thing." Do the thing. You might be like, "Well, what are you going to do there in the spider? I'll show you." I know what you're going to do. <laughs> do. I've been here a minute. You never know what I'm. You don't know what it, you don't know me. Maybe I guess. So when I'm working something, if I say to myself, "Hey, this, this needs stuff, stuff," right? It's the Nomi hood. Right. <laughs> She's gonna come into the Nomi hood. You can always go back in and add in a painting. You never ever have to feel like, oh, I can't, I can't do that. So let's put some colors out. And if you've never seen a gnome cat, it's a dog. <laughs> it's a gnome cat. It's a dog. <laughs> put out some more white paint. Got some, pur I should put out some purple. That would be really cute out here. I'm not sure if gnomes are allergic to cats or if cats just like eating gnomes, but... Generally speaking, I don't see a lot of them together. You don't? You don't think that there's, you know... Well, I mean, historically, have you seen a lot of gnomes in cat pictures, or have you seen cats hanging out with little gnomes? You see gnomes riding dogs. I'm just like, you know... I don't know, I think cats would be uh, a danger, wouldn't you? Yeah, I was going to say, anthropologically, anthropologically speaking, I think that historically, cats hunt small... Uh, Magical creatures. Like I think you're probably right. So I would take uh, each paint, uh, each building, I'm going to get a little white, and we're going to paint each space a different color. Gargamel's cat was Azriel. Right? Azriel. That's right. How do you remember that? That's so weird. Because Azriel was a really cool um, angel. Am I going to modify the traceable, says Tina? Yes. It'll be traceable one and traceable two. So you can do the um, first version or the second version. Western mythology. Cool stuff. It is cool stuff. And these are cool. I'm going to take a little of my green and some of my yellow together, make a brighter green. But I will get white into that so that there's good coverage. And I'm going to add an angle to that because I think I'll have that be a separate house. And I'll just paint around the hair carefully. So sometimes when I'm painting, I'll be like, hey, and I do this to you. I do this all the time in the studies where I start painting one thing. And then I'm like, you know, it'd be cool mm -hmm. is if it had this. And I paint that in and you guys never see that part of the process. 
Kimberly points out that uh, leprechauns have a healthy respect for cats. So that's a, another, another thing saying it, it may not be cat-friendly territory. It, it may not be? Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking those cute little hats and those little, those little boots would just, I mean, cat would lose her mind. Cat would lose her mind? Yeah. Could be. Cat might lose mind. Just each house should be a different color. And we're going to do a couple coats, and then we're going to do windows and personality. Gnome villages grow fields of catnip to lure them away. <laughs> <laughs> they have a plan. And this is very rustic. You don't have to worry about this in any way. Like being super particular, super perfect at all. Let's do a pink house. Little pink houses for the gnomes. Oh, here's one for you. Mm. Grandma Smith says, watch once upon a time. It will mess with your stories and mythology. It does. Yes, it does. They definitely did a retelling, didn't they? So Cinnamon watches all the shows, <laughs> and I watched the first five minutes of them. Yeah. John knows what happened in the first five minutes of every show. Yep. And then nothing after that, with the exception of magicians. That's true. Because Margo's awesome. Because Margo's awesome. That was like the only character that could keep him there. So what I'm doing is I'm just creating uh, different houses. And you can see I'm doing this very loosely. Because at this stage, we're just blocking in those fields, right? Mm -hmm. And then what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll layer as needed. And the layering is what kind of gives it that kind of rustic outsider art feel. You may have to carefully paint around objects that you have. I actually kind of like that as I've come to see it. I like when you, when you can still see the painting underneath it and it's kind of blocked in and you can tell that they were painted kind of in an unusual order. I don't know. I think it looks cool. Do you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> like, this is awesome. So it's so funny how like for one person, something that you do as a mistake or you know it was it wasn't a non-intended effect and someone else can come along and be like that's the thing that they like the most about it yeah very often i'll do a painting and i may not even like it at all mm -hmm. i may be like this didn't even go where i wanted it to go i tried something and it went in an unexpected direction i'm taking red now i'm gonna do this house and it may be red And do that red and I'm just using the colors I have uh, out so so far I have the primary red that the odd uh, the yellow a purple a quinacridone phthalo blue black and green so mm -hmm. far just playing 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 This is a very colorful neighborhood. He lives in a colorful neighborhood. There we go. And then it just becomes a more involved painting. Mm. I really I really like the little addition of the village. This turned out really cool. Little village it up. Yeah. She lives in a village. Well, you said paint more. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, everybody is enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> there's there, there's a lot of conversation around the pros and cons of the various retelling of all of the stories. Right. <laughs> Ranging from uh, super supernatural to uh, once upon a time. Very you get that. So we're gonna just some. Don't forget, you've got to put buildings and things behind, right? Mm. And then that means that we have to do a couple different things on her. This change actually does direct other changes that we have to think about a little bit. So. As you can see previously, we had a level one gnome design. <laughs> and then it got away from us. And then she went to <sighs> Gnome Town 
She did. I think I'm going to go green. She literally went to Gnome Town. It'll be another green home. Green's a great color for a home. But it's just the start of a Gnome Town, right? Just the beginning. The outskirts of Gnome Town. Where the prospects of wide-eyed gnomes seeing the big bright lights of the city come. <laughs> They're enamored chimneys, with all the opportunity. Chimneys, more chimneys. All right, more chimneys. More chimneys. Come here to learn the ways of magic and fashion. Become gnomes in their own right. Make a place for themselves in this gnomish world. Yeah, it's like that. This has become a big greenhouse, and that happens. So they can have some chimneys. We've had a request for some chimneys. I like to do these little kind of stovepipe chimneys that are a little bit crooked. Having grown up in the South, one does not respect chimneys enough. Moving up north, you're like, these things have a purpose and need to be maintained. <laughs> it's, not just, it's not just an aesthetic thing on your house. Paint those in. And what you learn very quickly is fire can be inside them. Very quickly. When fire comes out the top of the chimney, it's bad. Is it bad? It's very bad. Fire department shows up. They're like, hey, there's this stuff called creosote. It's built up in your chimney. And it's not good. I, I can't out. tell you where this is going to go or how long you're going to be gnome nap. Gnome nap. It's, it's, it just goes gnome and gnome and gnome and gnome. And if you take a left turn in gnome town, you'll end up in Gaul, where Asterix and Obelix live. Yeah? You think? Yeah. I don't know. I definitely think Gnome Town's adjacent to France. <laughs> they have too much style to not be. I'm going to add a little bit of a green potential building here. Shorter and smaller and whimsical and weird. Just paint what you've got. I am trying to stay out of John's way. Oh, you're doing just fine. You guys don't lose your... You have to wonder how Parisian gnomes vary from, you know, the country gnomes from Brittany and out in the way. Maybe from Corsicone, how they would be different. She still is, like, too big for this town. Like, she could, like, totally, like, <laughs> stomp all over this town. Well, this is she's way in front of it. The town's way off in the distance, and we're seeing. Well, no, because her... her feet positioning puts her, you know, depending on the scale and everything. But let's just play. We'll just say. We'll just say. It's okay. What you doing? I'm gonna come over to the camera. If you're gonna tell a story, tell, tell a story. Tell the story. What are you telling the story of now? You're going to tell a story, tell a story. That's right. So, this little fellow here. Uh-oh. That looks like a... Cat? It's a hunter cat. This is a scary gnome painting. Wow. Oh. That's but cool. It's really fun to add things like, here, and I'm going to show you, the, I'm going to show you this basic cat. Okay. So the first thing on this cat, if I want a cat that's Many kind cats. of arched, I got to do the arch first. Right? So let's say we're going to do an arched cat. Got to make sure I don't leave paint on myself because it'll stick to my own canvas. And then I'm going to add, thicken that arch up at the back. It looks kind of like a crazy little U, right?
Now for this, you'll want to put the head down lower mm. because when a cat's generally arched, its head is lower. And ear, ear, a little bit of a different positioning for that leg. Go straight up with the tail. And then definitely fluff it. <laughs> Off the tail. And then I got to dry it so I can be, do weird things elsewhere. Do weird things elsewhere. Yeah. Oh. And then make the, the fur go up. You did make the fur go up. You got to make the fur go up. He's, a, mm. he's angry now. That's pretty cool. And we'll finish him some little detailing on him. Now dry everything because it's in the next few layers that this is going to happen. All right. So thank you guys for uh, coming and hanging out here with us. Had some weird uh, stuff going on here in, in the... Oh, I mean, here's my button. There it goes. Now you can see what's going on. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. Go check out our website, theartsherpa.com. You can see Cinnamons on Instagram and Pinterest and YouTube and Facebook and um, all the places on the intertubes that Cinnamon knows. Yeah. So, on. She's asking me, she's like, I don't know if you just saw that. She's like, can you warm this up? I can totally warm that up. I'll warm that up right as soon as we're done okay. doing this. So John's going to heat this, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about composition. A lot of beginners actually will, on their own, have this kind of creativity happen. They'll be like, man, I wish this was in a city. And they kind of like loosely and roughly get something like this in look at this and get real stressed out and go, well, that's just terrible. I just ruined my painting. I know this because I get it written all the time. And people show me being somewhere in there, like I was doing great with the tutorial, but then I kind of did my own thing and it went wrong. What's happening here is this is very rough and raw. It is unfinished. So you're looking at a finished painting with an underpainting. And that can be mentally confusing to you. So what we have here is just the underlayment of what needs to happen. Now, if we take her to where she needs to go, she's going to end up being a thousand percent more awesome than anything that we started out doing because we'll have continued to work in our imagination space, which is, by the way, our uh, strongest, strongest space. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to go from here, right, which is like, I had some cool ideas, but I'm not sure where to go. This is exactly when you guys post in group and go like, I, I don't know where to go from here. I'm going to show you where to go from here. And that's why John is heating up my coffee. So let's talk about that. We are going to improve and brighten the colors in the buildings and create texture. We're also going to create like windows and things that make the city seem visible. We're going to finish out our cat figures and uh, make them seem really uh, funny and energetic with their eyes and their fur. We're going to pull her forward by creating some highlights to pull her space forward. We're going to create some wet reflections below the city. And we're going to add, because it was respect, requested, a ghost scaring the cat and uh, two bats. So I feel like we have enough time. We can, we can maybe do a ghost, some ghosts coming up scaring the cats. And we can do a couple bats and we'll do this and the wet reflections. And that will give us kind of a Halloween town gnome. So this is definitely kicking her up into that two hoot space. But I think if you've ever wondered how would I get from here to a painting I was in love with, you're really going to like the next 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes of this kind of all becoming what it should be. Huh? No. It was raining on the tree? Oh, okay. I don't know what that means, but yay. Okay. So I have two very dirty waters here. I'm definitely going to need to switch into a clean water. And I'm going to uh, rinse out. And we're going to talk about in front of her, because I want to kind of do this and then dry it, because I may want to have some finished elements. So the first thing let's do is let's take some red. 
And we're going to come underneath everything. And you're going to make some very wiggly little strokes. Wiggly little strokes. I'm then going to get into my yellow and come in and add some wiggly, wiggly little strokes. Wiggly little strokes for what's happening here. Wiggly little stroke. Because we're going to make that streak kind of wet and interesting. I think I've got a cup of water in the way. No. And this is fun because as we go, we can, you know, even come into some like maybe green and yellow. Maybe green, white. And we're just letting the paint create that little sense of wet and wonderful, creating a wonderful street that it feels a little more fun that she could be on. And we'll need to get this to a certain point. I'm just loosely mixing paint. And making those sort of expressive forward kind of little wiggles. And then when we add the white reflections, you'll be like, oh my gosh, that's so crazy that that worked. It is crazy when it works. So I'm going to give a little of my green and yellow. I like the green and yellow. I Actually, I think the little, this kind of makes that city street lights. You know, when the street's wet mm -hmm. and it's reflecting the city. Well, that's what we got to do, right? When, when we take our stuff to a new and unexpected place, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we make this feel like it was meant to be here all along. And that's really hard to do is to take a painting from, well, I designed this one thing, but I want to take it another way. That can be really hard to do. And when we get that far, we definitely want to dry that because you won't be able to get in any of your other reflections. And we don't want her floating. No. So don't want her floating. So make sure you thoroughly dry your painting. Get that all taken care of. And I'm going to, right out here, drop in chat as soon as I can find it. Do, do, do this. If you would like to be our friends and join us on Facebook, we would like to see all of your beautiful paintings. So look at the chat. I just dropped a link to our Facebook group. Please do join over there and come show us your Nomi girl and let us see what's going on. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to say a big art high five to Amy. Who's recovering there for some of those kidney infections. I hope that you come to a quick, quick healing resolution to all of that. Now, indulge me in a city. I really like to move with square brushes. Mm. So please indulge me in some square brushes because that will really help indulge me. Indulge you in your own show? <laughs> no, never. Brushes. You must only use round brushes. I'm going to take a number six art sharp square. And I just really want to use some squares because to get the, to get the next part, I really... You got a block? I like what... How... How square brushes create you that can sense square of building. You, yeah, you can square if you want to. It's all about you. It's your show. You can do it. You're the Sherpa. <laughs> well, I mean, like, you know, if somebody else wants to have their own show, they can do their own thing, but this is the Sherpa show, so you can do the Sherpa thing. I'm just using a bright because it can help with the edges. Because one of the things that you're going to want here is some clean edges, right? You've sketched out, you've figured out where you want everything to be. You have a clear sense of it. I'm going to get a little of my yellow into that. Come 
come up here and just add some fun little highlights. Mm-hmm. You have added story to this painting. You want to add story. I'm going to add a little bit of a bright roof here. Sometimes when, um, I'm back with my red now, I'm painting, what I will want to do is I'll have to put figures in, right? Because initially I didn't have a spider in there, so what do you do in relationship to that? Now I'm going to keep this dark blue building very dark blue. Right? That's a very good blue. And I'm going to keep this green building green but i may brighten it up a bit you can always come in with your yellow and or your white the white will take it to a mint the yellow takes it to a bright green But you're trying to get a handle on creating some space in the buildings. It'll be about getting those layers in. You'll want them, you'll need them. Now behind here, I definitely am going to want a very light pink. So Sumi was like, I don't know if I've spelled everything correct here. And I was like, that's okay. This is a painting show, not on spelling or math uh, Yeah. <laughs> so No spelling we... is required. I'm taking a very light pink over the pink that I've already done. Just going to paint that in a little bit mm -hmm. as we go. In the same way that I ombre things on her, I can still come here and, and even be like, but as it gets maybe down to the street, you can see I'm mixing on the canvas here, wet into wet. I can add that deeper value. See? Helping create a bright but differential. And as you can see, as we go, 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 the layers make a difference. They will make a huge difference. Tell you what I mean about green and white. Come across here and a little green white highlight. But I will leave some of this deep green. Because like maybe under the roof is a shadow or Maybe mm -hmm. the building has a bit of a shadow here, and I'll blend that out. And I've got my round brush just to make sure I've got a little bit of control. Doing this work means I may have to come back and put some key elements of her back in. It won't be hard. It's not difficult at this point. We know where everything goes. We just need to know that we need to do it. Now I'm going to take my purple and my magenta together and some of my white. I'm going to come over here oh. and make this building a little more enjoyable. Wow, you're really just like making it. Yeah, when it goes in, it'll go fast. The first part is just jumping in and committing to, um, hey, I had an idea and we're thinking about it. And then how do we take it from an idea to something that we actually. Yeah, you've taken this one right over the top. I will. We're not there yet. Take the journey with me and you'll Yet. be surprised. Um, hey, you guys get here all the time. And a lot of times you'll translate that into, well, I don't really have imagination. And it's not that you don't have imagination. You've got tons of imagination. What you might not know 
is the layers and the skills required. So I'm coming back with a dark shadow. I'm gonna come under the roof and a shade into that building as well. All right. Let's go dark green to a bright yellow up here. So All we'll right. start out dark green down here. All right, that'll look very good against her boots and everything. Green and orange her, and yellow always looks so nice. And the purple her art and green. boots. Mm -hmm. They're arty boots, right? Uh huh. She's got a bad style. She's she's got it together. And I'll just add yellow as I'm coming up. I'm still using my number twelve round. I am doing uh, the same mixing that I did on her hat and her. And as I come up, I'll just get stronger and stronger into this yellow green kind of space. Adding maybe little reflections back into her hair mm. where I want them. Don't worry too much about the spider. He's too easy to put back in to paint around. And sometimes that's another thing you don't know is some things are so easy to restore that you don't have to be precious going around them. Now we have a nice kind of like green yellow building. Uh -huh. At the top, if I add a little white into the yellow, it'll let me really pull up the value Go over the hair because what's easy to restore her curls, super easy to restore. So since I'm adding behind her, I have to sort of commit to this idea and I'm going to come behind behind her boots and everything with the purple magenta. Uh -huh. You've got to kind of commit to the idea that some of her will have to be put back. Or the lining on her, maybe the way we separate the values and things might have to change a bit. Oh, I have to go see it. I my the magic words flashed across my screen. I have mm. to see who said them. Someone said French press. Kimberly, <laughs> that makes sense. Yes, Kimberly. Just gonna torment me with your good coffee. And just come in here. Figures it would be Kimberly tormenting me with good coffee. Let's kind of define maybe some of these little stove pipes. Oh, Christina, I have to say thank you. Thank you, all of you guys, for the extra time today that we got to spend with you to do the little extra fun stuff and put a Nomi Village in and some Nomi stovepipes and some intruding cats. I don't know why we had to have cats, but she put some cats in there. I'm not going to, you know, you're paying. You're clearly judging. <laughs> if you want cats, you can have cats. I'm just saying, that, you know, they're there. I'm going to add a blue and white highlight to some of this just to kind of make these seem a little more considered. That's what you're doing. You're saying, oh, I, I, I thought about it. I looked at it. Sure, they were whimsical, but they were thought about. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rinse out if I want to come back with some just sheer black. Thin that out on my detail brush. Watching for that hidden drop when your painting runs away with you. Uh. And it'll happen. Sometimes you'll be painting and you're like, man, that just got away from me. And there should be room in all your art for that to go on. I'm going to add a little purple to that so that I can kind of. Take that little boo-boo away. Sometimes you get a little boo-boo a bit and you want to be like, oh, no, I'm not really feeling you. Just kind of, it goes away. Yeah. 
Now I'm going to put some blue and white up between the kitty's legs. These back legs because I want them to be kind of. A little more separated. This is funnier. Sometimes you do things because it's funnier. Right? Widening his legs is funnier. And it was, it was suggested we had bats and go ghosts suggested, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk some bats. Up here, there could be like a little bat. Bat. I'm going to put out some fresh black. You'll find like as your paint skins, it won't paint out as well. And that's just if you're out, you have your paint out for a while and you've been hair drying and stuff. That that is a situation that you are in. So I'm going to change my mind there and wipe that away and just go again. Two little lines. And then bring it down to a little dart. Right? Curve up. Curve up. Curve out. Curve out. Down. Down, down, down. I'm going to cross over to get a little closer on that. That's how you get the bat in. And we'll do that again so you can see how those bats are painted. Yeah, that would be nice. One's going to get really in there. And the next bat will be a little bit smaller. Okay, let's do this one facing maybe the other way. Maybe right. he's like batting his other direction. Uh, and he may go behind her a bit. So we have those two little upward lines, right? So we make the U. We come down and join. And it looks like one of those Star Trek insignias. <laughs> <laughs> it's Space Force. <laughs> I'm trying to be supportive. Of me? Space Force. Oh. I'm supportive of Star Trek. I'm supportive of Space Force. I hear you. I'm supportive of anything that eventually gets a spaceship that's called the Enterprise. But we've had a couple already. And I'm, I'm into it. They've been pretty good. I'm We're going to just paint those little bat guys in. Still looking forward to a forward-facing exploration ship capable of deep space reconnaissance and, you know, the stuff that they promised us. Mr. Roddenberry, deliver. I think he died. It's, that's, His dream lives, look, though. you know, escaping the mortal coil is not an excuse for doing your work. <laughs> All right, so we've got a couple little bats that are flying up in the distance. Right. Little bats, they're flying away. I'm going to take just the smallest amount of yellow. And again, this is still my detail. Oh, where are you going? I'm going to touch the little eyes here. Oh. It's very... Touch those little eyes. Those cats are super ticked. I think that cat could be, be even angrier and fluffier. Those are some spicy kitties. Some spicy kitties in Gnome Town. <laughs> gonna definitely exaggerate the fluff a little more. There we go. That's a pretty fun fluff. Uh-huh. And if you do have to hit pause and go take care of those earthly obligations, just know that we'll be waiting here right for you now, when you come back. Now you'll never say ever again, yeah, let's paint longer. You'll never do it. You'll be like, no, no, no. She means it. So it's like, don't, don't say yes. Don't say yes. Ooh. <laughs> 
Rumor from chat. Paul Hi, says, rumor. Fun fact. Lucille Ball prevented Star Trek from being canceled in the first year and used her own money to support the show. That's, I did not know that. I'm going to check that out because I'm a super fan of Lucille Ball and all things Star Trek. That is a really fun fact. Mm, they pushed it on a couple of these seasons and movies. They tested me. but They've never tested me. I'm loyal. The Mycelia Network was a bit much. No, that's that WB. That doesn't even count. That's Paul some Stamets. weird licensing agreement. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. But they they did give Paul Stamets a nice big shout out. I mean, the dude does awesome science, real he scientist, does. real good work, legit. He does. What we're doing is we're just kind of putting some of our curls back, right? Because we we painted around her, and when you paint around a character that you had in initially, you will sometimes need to come back and refine their space and layer them back mm -hmm. in to the illusionary space of the surface. Illusion. It is all an illusion. Well, one could say none of us ever actually experience anything. It's just a hallucination that we have inside our brain. So it's hard to know what the outside word really is. I'm going to sip coffee in a minute and... Made you stop being silly. I just existential crisis. <laughs> existential crisis. <laughs> All right, load up while we're letting everything dry, and come back in and kind of, you know, uh, give a nice lining to all of your little buildings. It's a good time to like put in little details, like say windows. And what's great is because it is how it is, you can be kind of loose and crazy with how you do it. I'm just coming across and... Maybe that, that buildings are off and then... There's... Been an overwhelming. I'm gonna do scallops under this one. We might have to satisfy the need for a uh, Star Trek painting. Although, I will say, depending on what season of the television series you watched, pretty much any one of Cinnamon's paintings could be on any episode <laughs> of Enterprise or Deep Space Nine or Voyager, because <laughs> they all have hol holodecks. And they That's true. totally went off script all the time because, I mean, seriously, if you're lost in, lost in space for years at a time and you've got a holodeck, there's going to be gnomes. There is going to be gnomes. Chakotay and Janeway. I have no, no. That was just, why did we do that? That entire season, that was just like, come on, guys. Well, I, mean, I, I, I have no explanation for that. I'm loyal. <laughs> come over here. You can see that as we outline these buildings, they take on that kind of charming little pop arty, rustic little space, and they become really fun. Maybe Neelix was a gnome. Neelix was a thing. He could cook. He could. I love John. He's like <laughs> super chatty today. He's like, maybe Neelix was a gnome. Neelix was something. Let's do a round window right here. It's always fun to like change up shapes and everything. Lots of requests for some Star Trek art. Like you do. So I get that all in, right? Those are fun. Those little squares and shapes and things are fun. Let's take some of our yellow, maybe a little bit of our red, and let's light up some of these so, windows. Some of them. You know what we're doing? A little yellow? So I would say this from, if you went from time stamp, you know, one minute to 50 Eight You'd be minutes. very confused. Oh, you would have the first gnome. That would be, I'd be a one hoot painting. That's a one hoot painting. This is this is just turned into a whole journey. Then this is maybe a two hoot painting. It's just this is definitely two hoot painting because we want to just have fun. And it's more 
um, it's what I would say is like these are just more of those skills applied in layers, right? Well, and oftentimes, you know, again, as you're painting, you'll be like, man, I wish it had a, I wish she was a, I wish there was a, mm. and how do you get there? Over purple, I'm definitely going to put some more white. And these are pretty good, but you know, now we need some gnome, uh, some, let's, uh, let's put a green yellow door on the purple house. Oh, that's pretty good. And then definitely a red door on this greenhouse right here. Mm. And notice that the size relationships between the buildings are also kind of all over the place. And that is, again, to give that sense of whimsy and... I think it even adds a little sense of community. Yeah. Much needed gnome town. Much needed. Well, I don't know if it was much needed, but it's one we got into, isn't it? I'm going to put in a, maybe a blue door. So let's take some blue and white. I may have to put out some more white soon over here. Blue door and the red door are okay. Just don't open the green one. Don't open the green door. You never know what's behind the green door. I'm taking green and yellow and adding some window boxes. Ta -da, ta -da. Don't ever underestimate what a window box can do. They add a lot of sprucing up to a place. Well, don't they? You know, it's it's remarkable. A little green. It... And see, it's just touching your thing. Just implying that maybe some greenery is coming down i can come underneath this blue and i'm going to paint in these little shutters that we've outlined mm. so now we're approaching the hour two i know uh -huh. i told you you were gnome napped gnome napped Ask for more, you get what you ask for. A three no me tour. And you just keep going. What I find happens to most people is they just kind of stop too soon. Don't stop too soon. Don't stop too soon. I'm going to add some light. In the window here. I'm definitely going to make sure that that. I'm going to add a little a line design of. Now, on her, we're going to have to do a very special thing. And John right. may need to get me a fresh water to do it. Fresh water. And then we've got to do some finishing work and then we're going to be there. There's one cup of fresh water and I should be there and I should be able to pull her all into her space. I may even, honestly, guys, my two cents would be to use a fluid paint here. I just don't know if I have any out. Oh, I do. My two cents would be to use a fluid paint. This You could use a craft paint or a fluid paint, but I would personally use a fluid paint. Right? You're going to load up detail brush. Especially on these outer edges where you're coming into these buildings and you've got to create some space that is separate from the building behind it. Very similar to black lining in its thinking. Now, along her dress. Oh, there we go. 
Definitely. Because what you're doing is you're creating a different value. Right. It's just that extra, extra little space so we can see what's going on. Yeah. Extra, extra. Extra, extra. Read all about it. See your gnomey toes glow in the dark. Because you painted them. Because you've got to paint it. You've got, you've got to do this stuff, right? Like, and if you do it on the outside, you want to do some on the inside. Not too much because you're not trying to, you know, change change your hair value. You're just you're just adding that layer. I'm on the toe of my detail like brush it. and I'm trying to be very loose and expressive with my lines. Now on Mr. Little Spider, I may come in and add some highlights to his little black fur. Oh. I thought you and were where do his that. little legs come in front of the building, I might add some highlight there, and that'll help pull him out. Yeah, where he was lost. You know, because you want to pull things out where they're lost. You're jumping around a lot now. It's almost we, there. It is almost there. We just we just kind of come through, and we just create. I think I owe everybody a ghost. I'm gonna... Oh, they would take a ghost. Well, I mean, I agreed to it, so. But hopefully this gives you guys an idea of, like, what happens if you change your mind? Um, uh, It's paint, so you just got to paint some more. You got to paint more. Come over here and a couple of places I like to. And you can see the village just gets cuter and cuter and cuter and cuter oh, yeah. and cuter. Hmm. What you where thinking? I'm just trying to think where I want to put a ghostly, ghostly ghost. Hmm. You could have a a ghostly sneaking out the blue door to the left, or yeah. out of the window, or one of the. Ooh, you could even have a ghostly symbol on her hat, like she's a not a ghost buster, but maybe she's a ghost <laughs> finder. Like I'm gonna let the ghosts out. She's a ghost. We're gonna maker. come right here. All right. Well. And we're going to go into the window. Despite my troublemaking ghost. Yep. That's go a pretty into good that ghost. window. That's a nice little spot for it. Yeah. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Ghost is coming out of the window. And then we'll come back and uh, give the ghost a little ghostly face. Because that's, that's what you do. It's a thing. It's a total thing. All right, and I'm going to take Ooh. a little yellow and some white. So is this a place where you could use that earlier lesson where you put all those little ghost faces and then you could like This crack? would be like the place to use that earlier lesson. For your faceless ghost? Yeah, I'm gonna take some white and got a little yellow in it. We're gonna just I come underneath like the street is wet. My bright brush. Nice little wiggly light reflections. Oh. 
I like those wiggly reflections. Just It just gives it something to just... I'm surprised at how much depth you got out of it. It is crazy, but you can take, you can totally in the middle. You got a lot. Yeah, we did a lot, guys. We got a lot in there. What do you all think? Tell me what. I think it's pretty fantastic. So, unexpected, longer painting. For all of our sure pets out there. Especially those that are stuck in hospitals or on the recovery or doing Made any of that, that funny ghost. unfun stuff. We, we love you guys. We're sorry you're having to be there. So we're glad you could be here with us today. Very much so. I, it's just not fun and we get it. Now you've got something else to do. Now, if you're coming to the end of this episode. And going, what happened? And you would like more of this craziness. Jump on over to theartsherpa.com and click on our calendar. And there you're going to be able to time travel all the way back to the beginning and find all of our episodes. And there's a lot of stuff there. So if you go to the video, click on video, and then just type in a word like in flower or waterfall or butterfly. Anything you're into. Any, unicorn, dragon, beholder. If you like Dungeons and Dragons, there's some of that stuff there. Um, there's, yeah. uh, sh there's some more. Like other Halloween stuff you could find. Sanderson sisters are out there. More gnomes. There's Jack Skellington is out there somewhere. Oh, there's a couple Jack Skellingtons, I think. There's some of that stuff floating out we there. We have about 70 or 80 Halloween paintings. There's a few. Some things have happened. Mm -hmm. Adding a little bit of white lining to the bats. So they show. There's the... There's one there that uh, that got away. The bats, they escape. From the town? Some days they do. But sometimes the bat comes back. The very next day? No, it's a week later. They wait a fortnight. <laughs> it's not the very next day. <laughs> oh, no. They take their time. They're super all about, like, whatever. You know. No. It's like a fortnight, for sure. Make sure my spider's got a nice dark black fur. All right. I feel like, where do you guys feel? I feel like we got I think there, this didn't is pretty we? pretty good, yeah. We did a lot. So say you just loved your gnome character and you just really wanted her to be in, I don't know, this crazy weird village out of the blue that we just made up for no reason. Two things they should do before they go. Mm. One, you should smash that subscribe button, then click the bell so you can get all the notifications when we do live and you can come hang out with us and do more stuff like this. And also, go check out theartsherpa.com where you can find cool stuff like our store. There's some cool coloring books for sale and other stuff going on there soon because I got a whole bunch of experimental stuff that I'm putting up soon. So check it out. Um, shameless plug to keep our lights on. Oh, there's a coloring book. <laughs> there's a coloring book. Yeah, you can buy those. And I've got more of those coming and more. Like we have some other cool stuff coming into the shipping. Another, shop. If, you've, if you've ordered up to now, the ship, the, everything is like going out today. Now, so where did we? That's what do we have? On. We have there's there's the thumbnail. There's the thumbnail. One who, if it's your first time painting, this is a great thing. If you just feel like, <laughs> oh, see here, there you go. Well, you can take me out of it so they can just even see. What do you feel like? It's I up think to it's you. pretty good. It's so. up to you, and I'll make a traceable from her. I'll have John Scanner, and I'll make a traceable from her, and add her. Hey, you put them both out there, and then I'll put you in the middle. And we'll get a pro we'll get a picture of her. And we'll add her to the project page, and this is what we do in our community. Um, is we always try to make sure that you guys have what you want. If you need a longer painting, we try to keep you a longer painting. If you need to have more fun, we try to make it more fun. My point with art is learn the skills. Definitely paint more. Be brave. If you have an idea with your imagination, just jump in. All you've got to remember is sometimes you just have an underpainting and you're not finished yet. Like you had a good idea. It's just an unfinished painting and you need a few more layers. But definitely, definitely believe in yourself, especially right now. <sighs> it was a good day, John. Thank you for being here. Oh, yeah. Thank you for Thank doing it. Thank you for everyone who came and hung out in the middle of this Wednesday. Uh, if I'm going to see you again for Watercolor Wednesday tonight, I am looking forward.
forward to it. I'm going to be demonstrating the Viviva color sheets for tonight's uh, painting. But, of course, I'll give you the exchanges so you can do it with whatever watercolors that you have. Be good to yourself. It is a crazy time right now, and it is an important time to take care of yourself. and Be good to each other because we're all going through it, too. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.